Good evening and welcome to this social newsroom episode where we're talking about the ugly truth behind the high cost of electricity. So let me sit back here so you can introduce you to our guest, a man who's very competent to talk about this issue, and that is engineer Isaac Ndereva. He is the executive director at the uh, Consumer Electricity Consumer Society of Kenya and he knows everything about um, electricity, what it should be, what it is, what it isn't, and the shocking truths that uh, hopefully will light or have a light bulb moment for you this evening. Thank you for joining us and the service that you give to Kenyans in this way. Uh, first things first, um, Kenya, you could just tell us, help us understand the ecosystem of the Tima electricity mm -hmm. who contributes to it <laughs> how do we get it from distribution uh, from source generation yeah. to distribution to switching the light ah thank you very much uh, mark masai and i think uh, it's important that uh, you uh, a good channel have found uh, a reason and uh, use for us trying to communicate to the populace yeah uh, because it has been a challenge uh, in fact uh, when we changed our uh, electricity connectivity from a population of uh, 25% to 76% currently. Uh, they are very new players or people who don't understand. Mm. So most of the users are new to electricity. They don't understand what was happening. In fact, some of them are likely to say, we better start using what we were using yes. a long time ago. Now, uh, power, if I want to start by the, uh, the whole play, all the players for power, we normally have the producers. Uh, we normally have f four categories of producers in, in Kenya. And uh, you have heard uh, people talk about Kenya. So Kenjian have got 26 uh, power plants comprised of hydro, uh, geothermal uh, is a uh, uh, that uses uh, fuel, uh, others that use wind. Uh, so we have a whole combination of them. They are 26. The other category are called uh, the independent power producers. Uh, we have 26 independent power producers, also comprised of uh, uh, diesel generators, yeah. uh, which are actually uh, six uh, uh, for, for Kenjian, they are actually three diesel generators. We, I want to isolate them because we are going to discuss much about them. Right. So Kenjian has three diesel generators and other technologies are going to be 23. Then we have IPPs who are um, uh, 26 and uh, I mean uh, IPPs who are 26 and uh, they have six of them are thermal generators. Then we have wind for electric wind turbine, we have ore power for geothermal mm -hmm. and such. Uh, even some small hydros. Then, those being two categories, IPPs and Kenyan, we have the government of Kenya who um, normally distribute or give us power in Mandera and some areas like Moyale, where Kenya power may not make sense. Yes. They may not make sense to distribute power from Olkari up to that point. So they normally have uh, some isolated uh, mini grid, or I mean off grid generators. Uh, we normally have 41 of them. So that is the government of Kenya. And then we have the uh, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation, which is operating the 50 megawatt uh, solar in Garissa. So those are producers. So at least you can be able to see that we have many, many uh, power generators. Because if you talk of 41 yes. uh, from the uh, off-grid generators, then plus 26, which is IPPs, then you add like uh, others for all those people. Mm. Uh, but now, um, uh, let me talk of when you come from them, they sell power to Kenya Power. Okay. But then Kenya Power doesn't go to collect power there. So they need someone to transport for them, and those are Ketrako. Ketrako, uh, again, they normally get their revenue from Kenya Power after the collection by the, the bill we get from Kenya Power. You'll be able to understand later how they are able to get their money. But now from the producers, we get power to Kenya Power through Ketrako. Mm -hmm. They are the bulk transporters of that power. They, we call them electricity trans transmission. Then from Kenya Power, they are the distributors. They get it from the substation, and then they give it to your houses or industries. And then now from there, Kenya Power, it builds you now, you are the consumer. Yes. So that is the whole architecture of this uh, energy sector. So Duta, my wife, uh, paid for tokens because yes. we were running low. And uh, the, what I saw shocked me, quite yes. literally. Yes. And uh, so it's 2,500, yes. but that's a lot of money. Is, <laughs> Yes. Um, and so unit 77. Yes. Um, token amount 1,602. Yes. And other charges 897. Yes. So uh, token amount 16, 1,602. Yes. Other charges 897. Out of the 2,500 amount, Metuma. Yes. So when I send this money. Yes. 
does it go to Kenya Power? Because people understand the high cost is because of Kenya Power. Mm -hmm. Just break it down for me. Now, I, I'll just uh, assist uh, your listeners and viewers on some very short um, website which they can be able to get all that. And it is important for them to get because it is meant for the information. It's called yeah. Steamer Tracker. If yeah. you type Steamer Tracker on Google, it will take you to electricity costs in Kenya. Once you click on that, you'll be able to be taken to a certain table. If you scroll a little bit, you'll be taken to a certain table, which tells you that, like what I have here, it has a selection for all tariffs, but it comes with uh, the default is domestic. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your good wife might have been using about more than 100 kilowatt hours per month. Yes. So now, the consumption that uh, the money that goes to Kenya Power is 20.97. That has been constant. We changed that in April of 20, uh, this year, 2023. But there are other ch charges that keeps on changing. It's not the issue of Kenya Power. It's a pass-through cost. There are normally uh, seven. Okay. Seven, there is the FFI. FFI is fuel cost, forex, and inflation. And we have a graph to that, I believe. Uh, yeah, fuel sure. cost, yes. um, forex, and inflation. That is an area where, which is very gray, and that is where many people complain, because that is a cost that keeps on changing. Yes. Uh, it's a boardroom decision for them to change or not. There are actually formulas for that to be done, but they don't follow that formula, and we have been able to identify as the society in electricity consumers that that is normally not followed, because the inputs to that formula are normally gazetted every month. Yeah. If you take each, they don't care that those values are not going to add up to that. Yes. So FFI, as I said, is forex, fuel cost, and inflation. The other one is WER. Those are levies because there is Warma, mm. EPRA, and then Rural Electrification Program. That is WER. Those are six. And then you add VAT now. Yes. Now, you can't keep on asking Kenya Power, what about those other seven components, which is FFI, WER, and VAT? You can only ask them about the consumption cost or the token amount. Yes. Now, that token amount is not also too much for them. Because I'll tell you one. Kenya Power, once they take the 20.97 Kenya shillings per kilowatt hour, remember, you are paying 32 shillings. Mm -hmm. So between the 12 extra from 20.97 goes into buying power, uh, where Kenya Power buys from the four groups I have told you about. And then the other, they have to give rural electrification program or uh, rural electrification and renewable energy corporation that operates the Garissa yeah. uh, solar. They have to give them money for operation and maintenance. Number two, they have their own operation and maintenance. Then number three, they have to give operation and maintenance money to Ketraco. Okay. So that is in 20 shillings. So if you hear that Kenya Power is making a loss, it's because they are able to divide all that amount. And remember, it's the same amount that have got losses mm. in transmission. Yes. So that is the amount that uh, they normally charge. So explain to us, yes. laymen, when the Auditor General uh, report says that Kenyans are overcharged by about 20% yes. for electricity. Yes. Who is this going to? Who is, who is the culprit in this? <laughs> and I know this is something you're following. Very yes, closely. I'm following uh, Nancy Gadongo. Uh, I, I think, uh, first of all, I think they have, they have been audited severally by other people who are private. I think Deloitte has been involved. Yeah. But this time, uh, she decided to, be, to get involved. But uh, because of the natures of Kenya Power acting busy, they were not able to explain things that even us as consumers can be able to explain. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have always gazetted there is a certain uh, amount for transmission losses that was being deducted from consumers from for 14.9 percent as losses. So once we buy, because Kenya, uh, we normally get a generation of around one billion uh, kilowatt hours or tokens, but then we we lose about 20 to 25 percent okay. in transmission because of course maybe you have a meter. And then that meter is still on, but it has zero tokens. Yes. So who is powering that? Th those are the losses we are talking about. They are called commercial losses. Mm -hmm. When you transmit power from here to Kisumu, uh, of course there is a voltage drop where power is lost. Okay. So we agreed with Kenya Power that it's 14.9. But in July of 2019, they changed that. Of course, they didn't involve the consumers. They changed that to 19.9. So that 19.9 is not power that we have consumed. It has been lost. Yes. So when the Auditor General goes and says uh, Kenyans have been charged 20% of the power that they did not consume, that is true, mm. and we knew about it. Okay. So I don't think that is new to us unless uh, somebody did not get time to explain to her. You see, the, um, the almost natural re uh, reaction will be Kenya power and Atuibia. 
your twenty percent. Yes, that's what they'll say. So it's is, is normally it gazetted. They, I don't think from because we have a lot of interaction. Okay. Uh, first of all, what makes uh, African countries <laughs> suffer most is because most of the people who go to fight for the rights, they first of all don't understand. So you might be out there like an activist trying to say Kenya power are thieves. But you see, you need to understand and tell them, this is where I think uh, you are stealing. But as consumer representatives, we've been able to check and see that the issue is not with the Kenya power's portion of the bill. The issue is with this FFI, fuel cost, forex, and inflation. Which you say keeps changing. It keeps changing. It's a, room, it's a boardroom decision because we say each of those have got formulas. And the formulas have got inputs that are normally gazetted every month. Right. So now I am just wondering uh, if you, they plug in the values they have gazetted in that formula, and then it doesn't give the cost they have gazetted as the, as the fuel cost charge, then they have to explain to us. But unfortunately, Part of those people who are involved, like maybe I would be interested to know whether the CS knows this, right. even the even uh, the PS, or even the people who are involved. Okay. But unfortunately for them, we know, and we know it's not moving as per the formula.